After recovering from an injury, it's time to let them back to their family. I meet Nora. What are you doing? Maya, no! She just can't see things very well. She did that time. Here we go. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Thank you guys for watching our bison channel. What I'm doing is I'm hanging out here. This is our sweet, precious, loving Eleanor right here. Eleanor is part of my first five animals that I ever started raising in 2018 from a Gerald Parsons up in Stratford. Eleanor, <laughs> she's so sweet. She's hanging out here. This is her uh, heifer calf. This is her second baby that she's ever had. Her bull, her first calf that she had in 2020 is over here behind me, and he's doing great. He's way bigger than Eleanor already at two years old. She skipped having a calf in 2021, and then she had little Nora here in uh, this past year in 2022, and we were super pumped to know that Eleanor had another baby again, and then the great thing about it is she had a heifer, so which means we have a very good chance of being able to keep her, uh, which is exciting. We can keep the Eleanor tradition going. So then what happened with Eleanor is right before we worked the entire herd, which was November 5th, I think, a couple of days before, Kevin and I were able to catch Eleanor and her baby, Nora. The reason we did that is Nora, she got hurt somehow um, out in the pasture with the main herd, and we, we don't know what happened. Just accidents happen. Any animal can get hurt uh, with the main herd. You know, you're talking about thousand pound animals uh, versus a little 30, 40, 50 pound calf after they're first born. So she got hurt and she had a limp. And so what we did is we worked her and Eleanor uh, by themselves. Kevin and I doctored her up and got Nora taken care of and uh, she recovered in about three or four weeks after we did that so she's been really good since about december no limp at all he healed really well and then we put him out here with some yearlings and eleanor who's basically at the bottom of the pecking order at the main herd with the dunbar herd she became the most dominant in this situation here put her in kind of in a softer uh, place to hang out and let little nora recoup from her injury. They've been in here since the very beginning of November. Here we are in uh, January 20 of 23, and it's time to let Nora and Eleanor back out in the pasture with the Dunbar herd where they belong. Eleanor, you got some hay in your hair. Hey, Thor. She wants to know what y'all are. Nora wants to see ya. Come meet Nora. Thor, come here. Oh, Nora, your store. It's not used to Maya. What's that cow doing in here?
Let me go. All right, so what I'm gonna do is open some gates real quick, and then we're going to try to separate what I like to say cut. Uh, what we, what we call it is gate cutting. We'll gate cut the yearlings um, away basically from Eleanor and Nora and we'll just try to separate them too so I can let them out with the uh, Dunbar herd. Well, Nora came in just because she's Interested? Need princess here to come in, but she's so smart. Come on. She's been down this road, she knows. Come on in, Maya, come here. Need this. Uh, she knows she's gonna get caught. <laughs> get out. Maya, no, and that's gate cutting. <laughs> that's about as easy as you can get. Guys, I don't always draw it up like that, I promise. I know you, <laughs> you're probably thinking, Dusty, this is easy. Bi working bison is easy. And it's just a, you know, piece of cake, right? Well, that <laughs> shows you right there how gentle, first of all, Eleanor is. And uh, Maya, no. And uh, how gentle her baby is too. And it's not always easy, but the thing about Eleanor and her baby, calves are, in general, they're always so curious. And Eleanor is my most curious bison. And so uh, you're able just to gate cut like that. So she's See, she's used to it. I was a little worried. She's like, oh, she's not going to come in. But uh, she wanted to follow her baby in, and now she's ready to get back out. So without further ado, let's put her back where she belongs, back with her Dunbar herd, back with her family. Dunbar! Hey, boy. Dunbar, he's waiting. Now we got this push back. And now we can let him out. Back with all them. All right. You guys get to go back. Are you ready, Nora? Go hang out with your calf, buddies. What are you gnawing on? Some protein? Get you and your mom out. Come on, I'll show you. Let's go. What are you doing? Maya, no! Maya! Great. Well, there goes Nora. <laughs> she took off. She's excited. Eleanor. Come on, girl. Come on. Now you got to get with your baby. Come on. Let's go, girl. Come on. Keep running. Keep running. Keep running. Maya, that's good. Ah.
Oh, well, there she is. Back with the fam. So Eleanor still hasn't seen this open area. Nora saw it and she was gone. Something that Kevin and I've noticed about Eleanor here in the past, uh, I don't know, months is her vision is just very interesting. She'll almost just run into you. I think her short vision is pretty bad. I'm not really sure, but she just can't see things very well. She'll about know Maya. Maya. No. No. Maya. See, she. let's see if she'll turn that corner there. Oh, she did that time. Here we go. <laughs> My point right there. She almost just ran into Dunbar. Eleanor and her baby are back, and so is Dunbar. Dunbar's chasing her, and she's pooping. And now they go, off to do their own thing. It's good to see that right there. With over two months of uh, Eleanor and her baby being away from the, the herd, they're reunited again. They've been able to touch noses, um, and smell each other and do all that since uh, since then, which has helped Eleanor and her baby recover, which has helped Eleanor, um, their, their socialness. You know, when you do those things, you have a, that's why you just can't put bison alone. And that's why we had to put Eleanor with these yearlings because not only uh, are these yearlings being fed every day, Eleanor uh, and Nora, which, which she eventually starts eating, are being fed every day too. It's good to see her back out here and Nora healthy. All five of these calves out here were born like August 20th. Five of them were born within tw within 24 hours. So these calves will be five months old about January 20th. And uh, Nora's right in that group. Dunbar's gonna follow her around for a little bit and do all their sniffs and whatnot. And welcome her back into the herd. Y'all are misbehaving over there. Oh. Happy calf. I think she misses playing with somebody her size. This herd is uh, it's gotten a lot smaller. 
We've only got five females here. All we got left over here is three quad paws and uh, two of my original, which is Dunbar and Eleanor. So we bought some of uh, these, when I say quad paw, if you guys are just now joining us, I bought some bread heifers in 2019 from the quad paw nation at a Oklahoma bison sale. I bought them bread so when they came in, they had a baby. And that's a good way, if you're wanting to get into the, the bison world and start ranching bison, uh, if you want to start quick, that's the quickest way to start is buying bread heifers. And so you can buy a, a bread heifer and remember they're, they're already going to be two years old and then they'll have that baby in the spring. Typically later that winter, that fall, you'll be able to wean the calf and then you have your first production. Um, and then you can decide what to do with the calf after the weaning age of six or seven months. Uh, but that's kind of the quickest way. We started raising bison as yearlings. So uh, when we first got our first five, which is Dunbar and them from Doc Parsons, uh, we bought them young. And so uh, one of the reasons that we like to buy them young like that is especially for us we, as new producers, as first time bison ranchers, we had to learn a lot. And it's easier if you buy them younger because you can kind of learn from them at a young age and they're a little bit easier to handle um, and you can kind of teach them your system and they get used to you uh, than buying them as full-grown adults. If you buy them as full-grown adults kind of like we did with uh, Big Joe. See Big Joe uh, I think he was five when we got when we got him. It was one of those things like we, we were taking a risk. We bought Big Joe and we bought two cows and it was a risk that we took by by getting Big Joe um, already at his age and size and those two cows, they've already kind of developed their attitude and, and whatnot. It's kind of like a, a senior in high school. You know, they're not freshmen. <laughs> they're, they're a senior. They're, they're ready to graduate and get all, out on their own. Uh, that's kind of like with these. They're set in their ways by the time that they're four, five, six years old. And so we took that risk with Big Joe. We are very, very happy that we did. But because he was around other people every day, it was a less of a um, harm for him. It was going to be less of a struggle for him to uh, to kind of um, manage him and, and raise him and take care of him. But uh, one of the things that we uh, calves are coming up, they're coming to see Maya. Um, one of the things that oh look at them, got their tails up. My uh, Maya. Maya only plays with the calves. She won't play with the adults. Maya, leave the calves alone, okay? Leave them alone. We're not working them today, okay? The biggest challenge with Big Joe in the beginning was actually running him through our equipment, running through him through the alley, the squeeze chute, getting him weighed and properly vaccinated was our biggest challenge with Big Joe. Because if they're not worked starting at this age, you know, six or seven months, and then, then you try to put a, uh, a 1900 pound bull through something he's never been through. Um, it's a challenge. Like he had never, he had been on a trailer once in his life, never been through a handling system or anything like that. So when you, when we got him at age five, it was a bit of a challenge and now it's so much easier. And when you have good equipment, like Doc Parsons brings his, his hydraulic squeeze chute down, he, big Joe goes through it with a breeze and it's not even a big deal, uh, to, to work him now and uh, it was a challenge uh in the first in the beginning days and you guys can go back and you want to see some action go back and watch us working big joe in uh 2019 and 2020 and all those early challenges and 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 you know making amends to our handling facility and equipment basically for big joe and, and just learning it was a lot of learning in those days and we're still learning but um so there is benefits to getting uh, bred heifers like we did here back in these. And then the other one that we have here is uh, Flo. Flo is right here. Um, she had her calf late. She came with Big Joe as well. And then Kit was the other one that came with Big Joe is already at the Ponderosa. So these guys will go over there eventually. All right, I've had, I've had a lot of questions and concerns about something and uh, just want to let you guys know I appreciate the concerns and the uh, questions on my comments, but uh, he's doing just fine. This is Thor. Thor is, uh, oh my, you get plenty of love too. Thor is here. 
at Mom and Kevin's at the Dunbar place. And he has actually just been a relocated a little bit. He's actually doing really good. And he, uh, he actually gets to hang out with another full-grown Pyrenees who Mom and them have had for a long time. And her name's uh, Fiona. And uh, Fiona is a really good dog. And so he's learning from a really good female he gets to roam here, but it's uh, we're not close to a main road, highway, anything like that. So he can't get too far off. And plus, uh, Fiona has done a good job of keeping him uh, keeping him happy and close on proximity. He'll, he'll go roam with Fiona here on the property and go see the bison and whatnot. But uh, she's full grown and um, she's, I don't know, probably five or six years old, maybe older than that. But she's a really good dog. And so he's... Thor has been hanging out with her. And so we still get to see Thor. And he was just teaching Jackie some bad habits over at the Ponderosa. And he was roaming around and going to other people's property, eating other dogs' food, stealing their food. Uh, he made a trip to the vet clinic. He was roaming around. The collar just didn't work for him. So uh, this is good. He's happy over here. And Mom and Kevin can uh, take care of him. And we still get to see him. So just so you guys know, Thor is doing good. Huh. We're at our cabins now. I got some work to do around here. It is always good to spend time with Eleanor. And uh, she is just uh, our unique bison. I can't uh, wait for Nora to grow up and, and see. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's going to be just like her mama. So I can't wait for that. But it's always a good time to hang out with Eleanor and, and, be, and, and spend time with her. She is our unique and special bison for sure. So... Um, and I know you guys enjoy Eleanor, and I know she's one of your favorites. Um, so you can't help but love her. She's always been this way. She's always been uh, my unique bison and has kind of never been scared of, of people. And uh, you still have to be careful around her. She is still dangerous and, and can hurt you. So, uh, But um, uh, she's out where she needs to be. Also, I was going to tell you guys about is I will be at the National Bison Association Conference and Sale it is their annual uh, conference and it's one of my favorite conferences and, and things to do every year is go to this and you get to see old friends, meet new people and hang out with just a bunch of bison folks and, and talk bison and stuff like that. So a lot of learning, a lot of mentorship that goes on there and I'm excited to go and, and see our friends and kind of congregate together and talk about, talk about everything, the challenges, the ups and downs of the uh, ranching world and things too and ways and ideas to improve uh, what we can do for ourselves and for the bison industry. So I will be in Denver for a couple days and then they'll, on the Saturday, uh, they're gonna do their show and sale. So I'm excited about that. Um, anyways, thank you guys for watching us today. Y'all keep ranching.